Hi and welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. My name is Tracy and I'm your host. And today I have a co-host, Scout, who has come up on the new white couch. And if you didn't tune in last week, we had a switch out of the couch. So the Comfy Red Couch is no longer in this house, but it is still the name of my podcast. So welcome to the podcast. As I said, my name is Tracy and you can find me on Ravelry as Tracy RR. And on Instagram, I am Comfy Red Couch. And it is a beautiful sunny day in Toronto. Yesterday was gorgeous and sunny as well. And I think that Friday was also a really nice sunny day. So it's been nice to get some sunshine. If it wasn't Friday, it was Thursday. One of the days, it was a beautiful sunny day. So today, it's getting a bit cooler than it was yesterday. Yesterday was five degrees in Toronto and as happens every time that the weather goes up in either January or February to a whole five degrees Celsius, people go outside in shorts. I don't get it. I'm still wearing long sleeve shirts and um, capris, but I put leg warmers over my capris so people don't see that I'm wearing capris still. But um, I just, I'm not fully into that getting into shorts thing. Maybe when I was a teenager I might have, but... Um, Five degrees is still too cold for shorts as far as I'm concerned. But otherwise, I am enjoying the sunshine in Toronto. It's supposed to be freezing rain tomorrow, which I have a day off tomorrow, so that will be really nice. I'm glad that I'm not going to have to go outside because I would much rather stay inside and knit on a day that it's going to be freezing rain and just really gross outside. So that is my goal for tomorrow is to stay inside, knit, and work away on some projects. So let's start talking about some tea. Let's have some tea time happening. And um, my lighting, as always, is terrible on the podcast. And uh, the sun is coming in through the window, hitting me on the neck. It'll travel as I record. Scout has laid down for a nice little nap behind me. And uh, let's talk about some tea. So today I have my fun David's mug. It is still warmish hot. I made a little bit ago. This is my wolf that um, changes to the, I don't know, actually maybe it might be a snow fox. I think, yeah, I think it's a snow fox, not a wolf. And it changes from black to white when you've got a hot liquid inside. So today I am drinking the dregs of my Tea Palace Organic Rose Grey. So I'm getting really quite low. I think I've got maybe enough for, it smells so good. I've got enough for maybe one more really strong cup or two sort of weaker cups of the organic rose gray and then it's all gone. And it is a lovely tea, but because it's so expensive to send it from England, this will be the last little bits that I enjoy of my organic rose gray. So Cheers to Organic Rose Grey and enjoying this one and cheers to you. I hope that you've had a lovely week and that you've got lots of things done. I've got lots to share on the podcast today with some finished objects or at least talking about them. I got a few things off the needles this week so that was really fantastic. So let's take a sip and let's start talking about some knitting. Mm, I think I made it a little bit too strong so I think Two more weaker cups will be perfect. But nice and warm for my tummy. Now it's time to talk about some favorite things. This week was a really good knitting week for me. I got a few things off of the needles, but I can't share them all. However, I can share some of the bags and this bag, I can't remember if I've shown you inside the bag before, but because it is now empty, the project is now blocking, I can share inside my Get a Clue Nancy Drew bag. And this is my one of my favorite bags. Um, just, I love Nancy Drew. I used to read the Nancy Drew books in the back of the car when I was young. I would just sit in the back seat and read all day long when we were on our cross Canada trip when I was about nine. So back seat, Nancy Drew, I was happy. So front seat with the knitting project in Nancy Drew, that makes me happy too. So this is a sock skinny and it has a lot of the 
original pictures from the book covers of Nancy Drew. Inside is a fun print with glasses, so of course looking for clues. And this is a lovely padded bag, so if you have any sharp needles in here, because this is a soft skinny, and oftentimes I know my Haya Hayas are quite sharp, um, they can, if it's a thinner material, they can easily poke through the bag and hurt you for one and damage the bag for another. So this is nice because it is a little bit more padded, so a little bit less likely to sort of uh, prick me as I'm carrying it. And this has a really fun, sort of almost like an apple pull on it. And I enjoyed using this bag so much for this project. And of course, it won't be the last time I use the bag, but um, it will go into the bag drawer for a little bit and um, it'll come back into rotation at some point later. But for now, I love this bag and I felt it needed a bit of appreciation for the project that it had been holding, even though we won't see that for a couple of more weeks. Next thing that I got off my needles this week was also something I can't share, and this is in my lovely Fireflies bag by Bags by Awesome Granny, and I have my fun little pull because this was my New Year's Eve cast on, and the project that is in here still needs to be blocked, but for now I'm just going to leave it in here till it's ready to be blocked, and hopefully we'll get some really nice days that I can get some nice photographs of this project. And again, this one's going to be released very soon as well too. So another test knit, but um, at this point, I can't share anything about the yarn or any of the other details, but when I can, I will. Next thing that has a brand new project bag, this is my commuter bag by Pink Hazel Bags. And I'm sure many people have seen this fabric. I love it. And it's just a lovely little lightweight bag, easy to carry here and there with you. And this, I started this project yesterday, and this was my car knitting as we went to my nephew's birthday party. And then when we got to the Dave and Buster's while we were waiting for my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law and all of the kids, I sat on one of the benches and just did a little bit of knitting. And this is the test knit for the First Sock Society sock so obviously there's going to be a pair of socks in here and there is some lovely lovely sock yarn and i am so excited to share what i've chosen i believe i have shared the skein that i've chosen on the podcast many episodes ago because it is something that i've purchased since i started filming the podcast and i'm really excited and i think it's knitting up really nicely it's so soft and um, I've come up with a really fun name that incorporates the name of the yarn and the name of the pattern as well. So I'm really excited to share that with you when I am able to. So those are my secret projects that I have been working on. So two of those off the needles, one on the needles. And I also was able to slip in some work on my All About That Brioche. So. Isaac is happy that I'm finally getting to this project and on Friday night when I got home I got the project that had been in Nancy Drew off the needles and I then decided to pick up my All About That Brioche and do just a little bit of work on it and the last time I shared progress on this project I had been about here so I had done one of the brioche repeats and I was feeling a little bit worried that I wasn't going to have enough of the Lemony Snicket colorway, which is this dark color, to do it as written. And I'm still pretty sure I'm not. So what I've done, and this is the leftovers, uh, what I've got left so far, or left right now, because I'm still working with it, of the Lemony Snicket, is I've done two repeats rather than three repeats of the brioche. And now we've gone and turned it around so it's the Lemony Snicket as the foreground color on this section here and this is one and a bit repeats and I'm going to finish that and then move on to using the Nice Guys Finish Dead colorway as the garter stitch for the rest of the shawl. So lots of yarn still left to knit but because it is 
a lot longer here than it was when I first started way down here. I think it should knit up fairly quickly once I get going on it. So Isaac was happy that I had pulled this out and had started working on it and um, maybe I will be done by Valentine's Day. We'll see. So When I was working on my Lemon Difficult Brioche Shawl, I put progress keepers all along as I was working and that was what I sort of meant to do with this shawl and I think the last time I talked about this shawl with you know that I had done any substantial work I had put this progress keeper on and then I knit to the brioche and didn't bother putting a progress keeper on until I started this past week on Friday just picking it up again so I propped I popped this one that is a jiggles and beans that Tracy of Nora George had given me it had been at the very end here but kept getting caught when I would turn around so I just moved it up to where I left off and today I am going to add a corner of craft star onto this project so that I will know where I was before and if I don't finish by next week we'll see how much work I've done and if I am finished next week well then I'll know I've done a good job Anyway, there is the new progress keeper and this was a corner of craft beaded progress keeper from Hannah of corner of craft and on the weekend I shared last week that I was going to be gifting my sister-in-law the Darth Vader and the BB-8 um, progress keepers from corner of craft that were available on the Nora George website. So I gave those to her yesterday and she popped them in as earrings. So she had Darth Vader on one side and BB-8 on the other side. So that was really very cute. And we also gave Violet the little butterfly clips that I shared last week as well. And Violet loved them. One day I need to get some pink and purple butterfly clips because Violet loves purple. It's her absolute favorite color with uh, pink trailing in right behind so I'm hoping at some point to get some pink and purple butterfly clips that I can send her way because she looked so adorable in them and then of course my sister-in-law looked adorable in her Star Wars themed earrings which um, I, I knew because she's not really um, she's not a knitter she's not it's not even not really a knitter she's just not a knitter and um, that's okay so it was nice that because these are on earring clasps, she's able to wear them as earrings, which is partly what I figured she might wear them as when I when I did purchase them. So anyway, that is my All About That Brioche, and it will get some love hopefully this week as I work away on my test knit socks, and then when I need a bit of a bigger project to work on, then I'll be working on this as well. So that is... I guess all of my knitting that I have to share right now but I have another project to share with you and it is now a finished object and this was a cowl it's a little bit big but Nathaniel started knitting this back in I believe June and he shared it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago during vlogmas and I think it was Vlogmas or it was just afterwards, but he shared his knitting. But it was really interesting because yesterday I had to work in the morning and when I got home Saturday afternoon, just around noon, I sat down and we were just sort of waiting for my husband to get home so that we could then go to Dave and Buster's for the birthday party. So I sat down with the knitting and Isaac came and sat down beside me where Scout is now and this was sitting just on the knitting table in front of him and Isaac picked it up and said can I work on this and I had to show him three stitches just reminding him how to do knit and this is what he did last night was he finished knitting the cowl and he said to Nathaniel that he wants to at least wear it so it's Nathaniel's cowl but Isaac would like to borrow it at some point and so I was the one who cast on I did have a little bit of fixing up in the middle when Nathaniel was working on it. Isaac did a fabulous job. He's got a, a bit of a yarn over here, but otherwise he did a really great job knitting this up. His tension's fantastic. And then I did a bind off for Isaac because I tried to show him how to do the bind off, but he just 
oh, mom, just do it for me. So I did. And uh, so we still need to block it and sew in ends, obviously. But it's a little bit big. But maybe once it's blocked, it can be worn as like a nice warm sort of scarf like this. Probably fit Nathaniel a lot better than it fits me. But, um, and I, I'm sure Isaac, Isaac loved it because he said, I just love the rainbow. So I'm thinking I might allow Isaac to take a look through my stash with me. And if he wants to maybe knit something a little bit more um, for himself and maybe something with a, a purpose, that um, maybe I'll let him have one of the skeins from my stash that he can then knit into something for himself. So he does like the idea of having the shawl that I'm making him there, the one I just shared, and he does want to share this, although he really he just loved the, the chunky wool. And this is a Noro, I'm not sure which, I'm not sure which which type. I don't think it's curry on, I think it's just a, it's just a Noro and a, a very chunky Noro, but lots of fun colors and um, yeah, it was really great just seeing Isaac reach forward and picking it up and just start knitting like he had done it every single day of his life. So teach a kid to knit and you keep them quiet for hours. Anyway, that is the finished object that I get to share. That's not mine, but I'm still so proud of both of my boys for working on this together and um, sort of a three way with the three of us all working at different points on it. Um, a nice little keepsake for the boys to have. Something I thought I would talk about on my favorite things is things that I am hoping to cast on in the next little bit. And I am really, I've been talking about this one for a while and I am almost there. So I'm hoping to get this baby off my needles and at least one of my pairs of socks off my needles because I've got my Christmas, my New Year's, and the Sock Society uh, socks all on my needles. So I'd like to at least get one pair of socks off the needles and it would be really fantastic if I could also get the um, all about that brioche off the needles. But the one thing I am wanting to get on my needles so badly is brioche ponchology. <sighs> it's so hard to say. And this is by Suzanne Summer. And the colors there on her sample are very similar to the colors that I have. I think I have some, I think it's wool folk yarn that I've bought. And I bought it over a year ago. And I just... I am so excited to finally get that on my needles. I've got a big bin full of the yarn ready to go and it's just a matter of sitting down and getting working on it. I've really, I guess, worked on my brioche skills with doing all about that brioche. I did the Lemon Difficult and also with the Oracle Shawl, I'm feeling fairly confident with my basic brioche skills. So. I'm looking forward to getting a little bit of pattern in there and some decreases and we'll see how that goes. But um, so that's one thing I'm really wanting to get onto my needles very soon. And I have had yarn for Pool and Conquer since we went to London a couple of years ago. I bought some Wilmiza and I've got a big, big skein of lace garn and I'm really wanting to do Pool and Conquer, which is a great wrap. It can also be worn as a cowl and it allows those gorgeous colors that are in the skein to pool and really show off the colors that when you pick up the skein you see and you go, oh my gosh, I love these. So I am hoping to get to that at one point. And that'll be a very, um, I think, great knit for sitting and watching TV because it's, I think once you get to the pooling stage, it's mainly just stocking at stitch, so circles in the round. And um, so easy, just a matter of sitting down. The hardest part's probably gonna be winding my yarn because it's such a big, big skein of yarn. I think it's like 1,500 meters or 1,500 yards. It's, it's big. And I finally purchased the Bits and Bobs blanket and uh, the pattern for it, so I am hoping to get a Bits and Bobs blanket cast on as well. So 
that one is a great way for using some of the minis that I got over Christmas, although I really would like to make at least a scrappy pair of socks with some of the minis as well. So I will see if I make some socks and then use the remainders of those bits and bobs for the bits and bobs blanket. But those are some of the things that I am hoping to get on my needle soon. And at some point I would love to get a sweater or a cardigan on my needles. So hopefully before April, I'm hoping. We'll see, crossing fingers. And that's all I've got for my favorite things this week. And that's probably enough. This week, the mailman brought me some lovely things. But before I share what he brought this week, I forgot to share something last week. And as soon as I was upstairs editing the podcast, I remembered I forgot to share these. And I've now popped them on my fringe bag. And these are my lovely heart pins from Tracy of Nora George. And there is the beautiful yellow. And even though yellow is not my favorite color, it looks beautiful on this pin. And it's got the rose gold sort of background or copper, like a rosy copper. And then it's got all the knit stitches. And then of course there is the beautiful duck egg blue, which is not capturing very well in the light that I have here, but nice, shiny, and a perfect place, I think, to put these beautiful heart-shaped pins from Tracy of Nora George. So those, I believe, are still in her shop, and um, just a, a lovely knitted texture. So pretty, and just adorning my wonderful fringe bag. And I got some yarn this week, and the interesting thing about the yarn that I got is that I did get several skeins of yarn, but in fact, I only got a couple of colorways, but I did get those colorways on a few different bases. So this is winter berries, and I got a winter berries on the Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. That's this one here, the MCN, and it is so squishy and soft, and all the gorgeous colors that are always in Jane's yarns. So I got a nice squishy, squishy sock soft yarn. And then I also got the same colorway, the winter berries, on DK with a mini. So I'm hoping to make some DK socks because DK socks knit up a lot faster than sock yarn socks. And I thought it might be nice to have a few squishy, squishy pairs of socks as well. And I can put some heels and toes on there. So fun colorway. So same colorway but different bases for maybe both socks, but at least different weights of socks. The next colorway that I'm going to share that I got from the lovely Sarah of Hedgerow is called Snowdrop. And when Helen of Curious Handmaid had her first Curious Handmaid retreat a couple of years ago, she took lots of photos and described all of the snowdrops, and this was happening in March, and I've never actually seen a snowdrop, but just that image of all these beautiful flowers has sort of stayed with me. So I really just wanted to get a bunch of yarn called snowdrop because it just sort of seemed like a, a hopeful sort of thing. And one of my goals in the next few years is to get to the Curious Handmade Retreat, although it's still another probably four years away from now when I'll have a, I'll be able to take a leave of absence for a year. And, um, my goal at that point is to go on the Curious Handmade Knitting Retreat. So I'm hoping that it's still happening at that time. And I'm hoping to go in March because I want to see these snowdrops. So I'm gonna make a bunch of snowdrop things so that when I finally get to the Curious Handmade Retreat, I will have snowdrop things galore. So I went a little bit crazy with the snowdrop from Hedgerow Yarn. So this is on DK again with a mini and Again, I'm going to make some socks out of these, some nice heavier weight socks, because I don't have enough sort of really quick, fast, thick, thick socks. So that's going to be for me, and that's one of the snowdrops I bought. And then I bought snowdrop on regular uh, sock, and I think this is a higher twist sock, and it's a merino nylon, and um, just super squishy. And I know it's got a bit of yellow in it, but there's lots of green in there too. And then I had to get it on the sparkle base. And who can resist sparkle and 
the whole idea of flowers in January in Canada with all the snow flowers don't come soon enough so I am really looking forward to those spring flowers so I guess all the spring flower yarns right now are just calling my name but I'm hoping to cat there we go there's a little bit of the sparkle in this snowdrop yarn and then this past week Tracy of Nora George announced that she was going to be releasing some yarn also called Snowdrop and it is going to um, it's part of the Flower Fund charity and it goes to the um, Mary, um, Mary Curie House or it's a, a charity uh, Mar Mary Curie, Mar Mar Marie Curie charity for people who basically have um, illnesses uh, that will be, I guess, in it's sort of, I guess, a palliative care type of house or charity. So um, I bought some sock and some sparkle sock from Hedro, and I bought some sock and some sparkle sock also from Nora George. So I'm going to have lots of snowdrop things for when I finally go on this Curious Handmade Retreat when I have my year off and um, plan to travel and do lots of fun knitting things. So. That is my goal, is to get through all of these snowdrop things by then. So I've got a few years. Now the next thing I am going to share in my beautifully adorned fringe bag is from Turtle Pearl Yarns. And I talked a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago where Emily of Turtle Pearl was absolutely amazing. So I had ordered some beautiful Christmas yarn and one of these is for me and one of these is for a friend. And I ordered it in November, fully expecting to have it, you know, sometime in December so that I could send it to my friend and then I would also have one and maybe I might be able to knit some Christmas socks. Although I wasn't sure I was gonna be making them for Christmas 2017. So obviously that didn't happen. Somebody stole the package off of my porch with this yarn and I talked about the fact that when I contacted Emily after Christmas because I was thinking where where is this we found out that the package had been delivered actually at the very end of November and on that same day I talked about this before someone else on my street also had a package stolen off of their porch and Emily was absolutely amazing because she didn't have to send me a whole replacement parcel because you know it got lost in the mail it wasn't signed for like it wasn't a tracked package um, but she did and um, customer service is I think her customer service has been amazing we've been having lovely little chats back and forth and um, so I did get my lovely mistletoe kisses yarn and with a mini and I don't think I ordered it with a mini. So as I said, Emily's customer service has been amazing. I had also ordered the Mistletoe Kisses on Sparkle. And I also ordered Ohm. And there's also another little sparkly mini in here too. So Ohm on Sparkle, which is just a beautiful rainbow from Turtle Pearl. And I do have Ohm on just regular I really wanted it on sparkle. So these were the four things that I had ordered, I think, without the minis. And this is what I got in the mail this week. So above and beyond customer service. I already feel that Emily went above and beyond with just resending the package. But to find that there were some minis added in there as well was a complete... Uh, surprise that blew me away but that's not all Emily added to my package Emily added a gorgeous sock set of on Bourbon Street which is this fun fun Mardi Gras inspired colorway on sparkle base so definitely super super glittery and Emily didn't have to do that and just the fact that she really wanted to make the the sad thing of someone taking something off of my porch better just blows me away and I have always loved turtle pearl yarn I have a very healthy stash of turtle pearl yarn upstairs but I have to say 
I have a renewed love and respect for Turtle Pearl and huge thanks to Emily for making that situation better than right and um, going above and beyond. So I have to say amazing, amazing customer service, lots of communication. It was really my fault for leaving it as long as I did because I didn't even follow up with her until after Christmas, but I am just absolutely blown away by not only her customer service, but her generosity. So beautiful, beautiful sock colorways. I always love, as I said, my turtle pearl yarns. They are fun to knit up and I am excited to get these on my needles too. And I'm really hoping that one of the Sock Society sock patterns is a self-striping because I would love to use a turtle pearl for one of those. And I've got lots to choose from. But for this week, that is all I have to share for brown paper packages. And as always, it's probably enough. And now it's time for some bits and bobs. And my bits and bobs section is just general chatter about different things that have been going on. And yesterday morning, I had to go into work, which is not a normal thing for me. I don't normally work on Saturdays. So Friday morning when I woke up, normally I wake up Fridays and I go, yay, I have no more wake ups. So, you know, uh, you know how often you might count how many sleeps till the weekend. I woke up Friday morning knowing that I still had one more sleep till my weekend because my weekend sort of officially began Sunday, and uh, which is today. So waking up on Saturday and having to go in was a little bit challenging, although I did get to sleep in a tiny bit more than I normally do, and I didn't have to get the kids ready to go with me, so that was also helpful. But the big consolation is that I have tomorrow off instead. So I get to stay home, I get to relax, I get to knit, I get to put the fire on, I get to drink tea all day, and I am going to just have a lovely, I don't want to say lazy day, because I'll be hopefully working away on different projects and doing some things around the house, but just a day where there's no kids around, and it's just a day for me, a selfish day, not a lazy day. And um, Isaac is about to go into exams, so he's just finishing up his semester at school. So he only has one major exam. I mean, my child has an amazing semester. He has his English class, so grade 11 English. He has a vocal music class, he has a dance class, and he has a drama class. So he's got projects to do for each of those classes, but... Um, just a, not a lot of brain drain, at least for the academic subjects. So he's got one exam during the exam week, and then he's got several days off, which will be very nice for him to to have some relaxation time. Maybe I'll, you know, give him a, a job. I did think about having him finish off his own shawl. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to give that over to him, although I think he'd probably take on the challenge. He'd have to learn some increases and decreases. It's not terrible, it's not too hard. But uh, anyway, maybe I'll, I'll give him some knitting to do while he is on his little exam break. And uh, he'll have a couple of days off later this week. But um, from Monday, Tuesday, he's got his culminating activity, so the big projects that he's working on. And then I think his English exam is on Wednesday and then he has Thursday and Friday off. So not a hard day. He does have to go in the following week for interviews and performances and things like that for his classes. And then his next semester is pretty amazing as well. He has, he's in a musical theater program at his school. So he has a double musical theater uh, period. He has a uh, personal fitness class because he still has to get his phys ed and then he also has a set and design class so an amazing grade 11 year as far as I'm concerned so um, we'll be doing course selection soon for him in uh, for his grade 12 year so a lot of the same things he does have to take English as part of his curriculum and um, otherwise it's you know what you might as well enjoy those classes in high school because once you're out of high school, you don't have those the access to those programs. So the nice thing about him going to an art school is that he does have those types of programs. So 
let him enjoy them. That's my that's my feeling on it. Anyway, um, so that's Isaac. Nathaniel and I have been listening to our Harry Potter audiobooks. We were listening to the Order of the Phoenix last week, and that is a long, long audiobook. And where we we would sit every minute we could. Um, on Tuesday night, I was starting to get a little bit nervous and I looked ahead and we still had about six hours or seven hours still to listen to and I had to return the book Thursday at four o'clock. So what I did was I put the speed of the audiobook to 1.25. So he was really, really talking fast as he was going through the whole book and he was reading really quickly to us as we were just trying to digest as much as we could of the Harry Potter Order of the Phoenix. And um, anyway, so... We finally got through the Order of the Phoenix on Wednesday night at about nine o'clock and then I sent Nathaniel to bed and I had sort of staggered them coming out of the Toronto Public Library so that I would get them in order of the books. But what ended up happening was just before we finished Order of the Phoenix, the Half-Blood Prince came into my inbox. So we've got that one we're listening to now. I've just taken them out from the Toronto Public Library on Overdrive. And now I also have the Deathly Hallows in my inbox too. So we now need to listen to the sixth and seventh book. And we have 21 day borrowing time for both. And if you don't finish it within those 21 days, you can, you can re-reserve it. But the problem is you go to the end of the line. So you're back at 170 for waiting for 35 copies. So it takes a couple of months to get through. But you know what? It is a great way to listen to the books. It's free. Um, it would be fantastic to have them in an audiobook library, but um, at this point, just taking them out of the library has been so much fun. And Nathaniel just sits there and listens, and I knit, and it's it's really been wonderful listening to the Harry Potter books again because it's been so long since I listened to them. And I remember when we first, um, when Isaac read the Order of the Phoenix. He really got into the, the Harry Potter books and he was, I think he was about seven or eight when he started reading them. And he would devour a book within a week. So I thought for his age to read, especially the really thick ones within a week, he was doing amazing. But when he was reading the Order of the Phoenix, he would come downstairs and he, that umbrage, she's gone too far this time. Oh, that umbrage. And I just remember him be so upset by all of the things that Umbridge did and um, so it was kind of fun that not only has Nathaniel really enjoyed listening to them but Isaac also comes down and sits with us now as we listen and yesterday when he picked up the knitting we were also listening to a chapter of the um, de uh, the uh, Half-Blood Prince and um, he was just he was enjoying knitting and listening to Harry Potter. So just a really nice bit of family time. Greg is not into Harry Potter as much as Isaac, Nathaniel and I are. And, um, but we're, we're trying, we're trying so hard. Greg has been taking a Latin course at U of T. He just, something he's interested in and he's been enjoying taking that. So for Christmas, and I don't think I showed these on the podcast, but I did pop them on my Instagram. For Christmas, I bought him the first book and the second book in Latin. So this is Harrius Potter, A Philosophy Lapis. And this one is Harrius Potter, A Camera uh, Secretorium. So they are full Latin texts. So I don't know if you can read it, but it is all in Latin, and uh, that was his Christmas gift because I thought that would be a, a fun thing and that uh, maybe he'd get a little bit more into the Harry Potter like the rest of us have been. So that's what you do, right? You just buy them the Latin version or whatever language they're studying version, and then hopefully they'll start being interested too. But anyway, we have been enjoying sitting together and listening to the audiobooks, and as I said, definitely... A recommended thing especially when it is free from your local library. One last thing for bits and bobs our shower is almost done so we've been we had to rip out all of the base of the shower and the bottom few chop tiles because the water was leaking into the basement and that's never a good thing so 
The tiles are now all in and the wall tiles have been put back up. We just need to wait for them to be grouted and then just caulking to make sure that there's no issues going down into the basement because water in the basement is never a good thing. But soon we will have our first floor shower back in order again, which will be wonderful because it's been out since August. And uh, that's a long time not to have a shower. So Greg and Isaac have been going to the gym and showering there because they don't like to have a bath in the claw foot. I don't understand it. But um, anyway, I am really excited that that will be happening probably, I think, I think our friend Edward will be coming this week, um, maybe Monday, maybe even today, to do the grouting and then he's just got to do a few touch-ups and then we will be able to reuse our shower again and I am really, really looking forward to having that part of the house back functioning again. So definitely a very good week for Bits and Bobs, lots going on and um, I'm looking forward to a day off tomorrow so that I can just have some quiet time and uh, that'll give me a lot more hopefully to share on next week's podcast. So that's all I've got to share for Bits and Bobs this week. Thank you so much for joining me on the Comfy Red Couch this week. I always love having you come sit with me as I chatter away about knitting and tea and all those lovely things. I hope that you have had a lovely week. I hope you had a chance to sit down, grab a cup of tea. I forgot at the top of the episode to mention that. I forgot to say welcome as well. So I hope you did feel welcome because I always love having you. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy your cup of tea, coffee, whatever it was that you were drinking and that you had a chance to sit down with your project of choice. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the Comfy Red Couch. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye. At the very beginning of the podcast, I shared my fun David's mug. And I talked about the white fox on the front. I've now just finished filming. <gasps> it's no longer white because my tea is cold. But that's okay. I'll drink it anyway. Cheers. Have a great week. Still yummy. <laughs>